Okay. Um, once again, Ken Liss from the Historical Society is going to share um, his knowledge on how to use the library's historical newspaper database, which we started not, um, not two years ago, in fact. So uh, take it away, Ken. Thanks, Jessica, and uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I see some familiar faces, including some, and, and names, including a few people I haven't seen or talked to uh, even, even before the, uh, we were all shut down by the pandemic. So nice to, to see so many of you. And um, uh, I, I think I can, I can say without fear of contradiction that uh, over the 20 or so years that I've been researching uh, local history in Brookline, I've spent more time looking at Brookline, old Brookline newspapers than, than anybody. Um, it hasn't always been easy, especially in the old days when it was all done on a microfilm reader that was probably as old as some of the newspapers I was looking at. Um, and um, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit of what that was like so you'll know what you're, what you're missing. Um, things improved with the addition several years ago of a new microfilm reader connected to a computer. Among other things that made it possible uh, to save articles to a flash drive or an online folder instead of uh, printing them out or taking pictures of them with my phone or my iPad, which I, I did quite a bit of, and I'll show you some examples of that as well. But I, I was, of course, thrilled when, when Jessica told me during the earlier stage, uh, one of the earlier stages of the pandemic, that one of the things they were doing while the library building was closed to the public was having a, a first batch of newspapers uh, digitized. And ever since uh, those papers and a second batch a few months later became available online, I've been using the old papers uh, as much, if not more, than, than ever. Uh, so in, in this, this program, I'll be demonstrating uh, a couple of things. One, I want to spend some time giving you a sense of the kind of content that you can find in, in the, uh, the newspaper database. Um, there, there, there's quite a bit, and uh, some may seem obvious, but there are a lot of things that uh, you might not think of as the kinds of newspaper content that uh, is useful for local history research. So I'll be uh, showing you some examples of the, the types of content that's there, and also how to use the, the library's newspaper database, which includes papers from 1870 to 1941. Uh, I'll show you tips and tricks for searching effectively and efficiently for saving things you find and uh, infusing one bit of research to lead you uh, to more on the same topic or as often happens uh, in this kind of research or any kind of research, uh, the way one thing that you find can lead you to uh, other topics you didn't even know you were interested in. Uh, I, I did, as the head of instruction at the, the, the Boston University Libraries and in my, throughout my career as a librarian where I uh, taught students and faculty and other librarians uh, ways of doing research, that was one of the uh, things that I, that I often uh, told students in particular that um, you never know what you're going to find and, and, and you're going to go down rabbit holes and, and directions that uh, uh, you didn't expect and find topics that uh, really surprise you, but turn out to be very fruitful. I, I had a, a, a standard line I would use with students to describe my own method of searching. I called it directed stumbling. And, um, and, and they got it. They got the idea that, that you, you stumble around, you're looking for things, and you notice what you, what you come across. And that helps drive the direction that you're going to go. And that's certainly been true of the, the, the Brookline uh, newspaper database. As, uh, as Jessica mentioned, we've had a, a few glitches in, in, the, in the last few days. Um, I've been working on this presentation. I decided um, that I would uh, capture a lot of screenshots, um, just a little wary in, in, uh, of, of technical glitches and thought I would uh, have screenshots uh, um, and, and then later go, go live and show some things. And uh, I was pretty much finished with my presentation uh, on Monday night and Tuesday I logged in and the interface had changed. Um, the, the, the company that, that, uh, that, that created the database that did the digitization and created the search engine and does this for other libraries uh, around, around the country uh, changed the interface. And, uh, and there were a lot of improvements to it, but um, that meant I had to change my slides and that meant that I had to um, uh, figure out the way the new system worked and what all the features were. So that was kind of exciting two days before the presentation. Um, and then uh, this morning when I logged in, uh, 
I uh, went to grab another screenshot and the search wasn't working. Nothing was coming up. And I, I in you know, a mix of amusement and uh, bewilderment, I, I, I contacted Jessica who contacted the, the folks at the database and it eventually came back up with the old interface. And um, uh, the last I saw, um, the new interface was up, but wasn't working. So we'll have to see the new interface, uh, the new interface with no content and the old interface. Um, so uh, at, at sort of the latter part of the presentation, I'll try and go live and we'll see, see what we can do. Um, but um, I'll, I'll leave time for questions and hopefully to do some uh, demonstrating of um, uh, the way you can use this database beyond the screenshots. So let me share my screen. Give me a second. Okay, you should all now see the big screen with the various uh, Brookline newspapers on it. Uh, one thing I learned in my in my time working as a as a librarian at, at BU is uh, uh, when I'm doing uh, presentations and sharing my screen when, in, in, in the, the Zoom era uh, to turn off a lot of things that uh, uh, that I have open. I think I did a class where I had uh, four windows and uh, or, or four. Uh, screens and 52 windows open and trying to find what I was trying to share was was practically impossible. So um, uh, so what kind of things are there in, in the newspaper? What kind of newspapers are there? Um, back in um, 2000 and, um, 2011, uh, there was a history of Brookline newspapers that was written by as a senior project in a, a media studies class at George Washington University by a Brookline High, high School graduate named Maeve Dugan. And um, one second, make sure the slides will advance. So this is uh, Maeve's uh, lengthy, I, I reread it uh, just this week and it's, it's really very good, chronicling citizens, a history of uh, newspapers in Brookline, Mass. And it's very detailed and very good and uh, explains um, about the, the, the many different uh, papers that uh, have been covering Brookline uh, starting in 1870. Maeve actually found records of a short-lived local newspaper in the 1850s. And uh, as far as I know, there are no copies of that paper, although I may be wrong and uh, uh, we'll, we'll dig a little bit further, uh, followed by the Brookline transcript in 1870. And in 1874, the Brookline Chronicle uh, the longest tenured local paper, and the one under various names that uh, makes up the bulk of the content of the library's newspaper database. And, and you can see here uh, some of the lists of papers and the years and the number of pages and uh, the, the, the Brookline Chronicle and the Chronicle, sometimes they had Brookline in the name, sometimes they didn't, is, is, is clearly the longest. Um, I, I love the um, the banners too. My favorite one is a very short-lived paper from the 1880s called the Brookline News uh, because it has uh, an inkwell and a quill and, uh, and a telegraph line. So the Brookline News uh, with, with this uh, um, banner capturing the way information was, was, was shared in, uh, in, in the 1880s. And I, I really love that one. So the, the, um, the, the size um, of the papers, uh, both in, in, in terms of the number of pages and lots of other things uh, changed over time, um, but uh, it, the papers always carried a lot of different kinds of, uh, of information. Um, And get this to advance. There we go. So there, there was information about um, local events, including uh, politics, uh, uh, election, and uh, some examples on this page. Uh, what happened in the, in the local election and town meeting? Uh, traffic regulations. Uh, one, one of uh, one of my favorite things to to look at is how. Uh, regulations changed with traffic and are still changing today. Uh, events at the State House that had an impact on Brookline and uh, major events like in the 1870s when Brookline, along with several other independent towns, voted on whether to be annexed to Boston. And while West Roxbury and Charlestown and Brighton uh, in 1873 voted 
to join Boston, Brookline voted not to. And all that is covered in the newspaper. So in, in, important pieces of uh, Brookline history covered in uh, the local papers. There were other kinds of events covered. Uh, suffrage. Uh, Brookline uh, was very, uh, Brookline people, men and women, were very active in the suffrage movement, both for and against suffrage. So uh, there are articles from 1915, equal suffrage notes and anti-suffrage notes. Um, the 1918 influenza uh, epidemic or pandemic, uh, widely covered in the local papers where uh, 150 or so people in Brookline died uh, in, in uh, 1918 and 1919, widely covered. I wrote a long uh, two-part series about this in uh, my, my Brookline history blog using the newspapers and other sources. Uh, 1930, another example when uh, Brookline uh, finally voted to allow a movie theater in town that led to the Coolidge Corner Theater, now uh, uh, almost 90 years old. And uh, events maybe not so historic, but uh, of interest. Uh, we're expecting a big snowstorm this weekend. And um, here's an article from 1940, Brookline uh, now practically clear of two foot snow blanket that buried the town. So uh, all, all kinds of things that you can learn about both uh, uh, major and minor and, um, and, and somewhat normal and how they happened in the town. Uh, you can read about uh, the infrastructure, about uh, what was built, about, the, about new streets, 1886 Station Street. The name is given by the selectmen to the new approach from the Washington Street Bridge to the B&R um, Railroad Station. That's, uh, um, so, uh, that was in 1886, in 1907 and 1911 and, and many other years, uh, building, building permits that were issued, uh, transfers of property, uh, the creation of neighborhoods in 1916, the creation of Blake Park, one of my first big research projects, which was the area behind the high school going up Aspenwall Hill. You can read about that. You can read about commercial buildings like the uh, new Coolidge Corner block in 1922. That's a building known as the Altman Building. That's at the corner of Harvard Street and um, Babcock Street. Uh, still a commercial building today. And you can read about buildings that uh, were taken down. The, an old landmark disappeared in 1937. There's the Sewell Stearns um, house, which stood in Coolidge Corner until Beacon Street was widened and it was moved a little bit to the south and torn down in 1937. So uh, physical changes and, and, uh, and, and uh, creation of property is all available. You can also read in the newspaper about uh, people. Um, uh, some examples here, some profiles of different people. Some of these are when they died, uh, obituaries, and some are about them getting awards and other things. Um, you may not know all the names on, on this particular page, but uh, down in, in, on the bottom center is Amy Lowell, the famous poet uh, of, of the Lowell family who lived in Brookline. And uh, this is after her death in 1925, 1905, um, uh, an obituary of Henry Poor. That name may not uh, mean much to you, but he's the poor of Standard and Poor who lived in Brookline. Uh, Harvey Cushing at the top was a, a, a very well-known brain surgeon, a pioneer in brain surgery, who um, uh, lived in Brookline for many years. And uh, uh, he was given an award in 1922. And uh, somebody that I wrote about a long time ago when my kids were uh, attending the Pierce School, uh, the principal of the Pierce School for more than 30 years, a woman named Mary McSkimmon, not particularly well known today, but a, a pioneer in many ways, who uh, was uh, the president of the National Education Association at one point, uh, worked a lot about uh, increasing international understanding of other countries and other cultures in the schools. And uh, when she was given a, a, a testimonial dinner, uh, that was reported out in 1925. But less famous people as well. So lots of different reports on, uh, on, on people in Brookline um, in obituaries. And these are people who were not particularly famous. Uh, some of the people on the previous page were written about in the Boston papers and nationally, and you can read a lot about them. But most of these people were not. And uh, um, you, you can see uh, all, all kinds of people, and I'll just point out a few from the very first column. Uh, Julia Hayes had two bake shops in town. Uh, Thomas Cotter was a champion roller polo player. 
I don't know what role the polo was, but that's something I'll probably look up and, and learn more. Major Stephen Cabot commanded Fort Warren um, uh, in South Boston during the Civil War. Uh, Herbert Taft was a Boston businessman. You'll also notice that uh, as late as 1933, the women are often listed by their husband's name. So you've got Mrs. Charles E. Hapgood, Mrs. Isaiah C. Young, uh, et cetera. Whereas Julia Hayes was not married, so she's Miss Julia Hayes. They'll give their full name uh, below, but that's the way they were listed, um, which can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes when, you, when you're looking for, for somebody. Uh, do you look for them under their husband's name or under their own name? Lots of stories about people that are um, kind of buried in the newspapers because the papers uh, had these long columns of little small items, small tidbits under uh, in various titles like about town. And, um, and those are really hard to find. Here's one that I uh, came across uh, fairly recently. Mr. John S. Dunham, former United States minister to Haiti, spelled H-A-Y-T-I, has been visiting Mr. and Mrs. Ridley on uh, Kent Street. That's Florida Ruffin Ridley, for whom one of our schools was recently renamed, and her husband Ulysses. Uh, Mr. Durham was accompanied by his wife, who was widely known as Miss Constant McKenzie, superintendent of kindergartens at uh, of Philadelphia. I looked both of these people up. Uh, wasn't familiar with them. Um, uh, John Durham replaced Frederick Douglass as the U.S. representative in Haiti. Uh, his wife, the head of the uh, kindergartens in uh, Philadelphia, was white. So they were a mixed race couple. Uh, that was uh, an interesting aspect. Uh, Charles Chestnut, who also spoke there, was a black author, lawyer, activist. And, and I had never heard of any of these people, but I learned about them just by coming across this little tidbit in the Brookline newspapers. Um, it won't surprise anybody who knows what Brookline is like today, but the papers are also full of opinions and um, uh, the, the social media of its day, if you will. Uh, here is a, a collection of uh, kind of letters to the editor as well as uh, editorial comments uh, when Brookline voted in 1923 in a referendum about allowing a movie theater in town. And at that point they rejected it. So it was seven years later that uh, movie theaters were allowed to come to town and you read Wonderful things like, uh, just wonderful language wise. In my day, yellow covered dime novels were taboo to be devoured only behind raised desks, lids or stone walls, but they were as tame as rabbits compared with the movies. And on the other side, uh, on the right side of ones in favor. Uh, why in all this talk against movies isn't a mother's view considered? In reading the list over, I guess almost everyone is perfectly able to afford to go at any time out of town for their amusements, while you take a mother who is too tired to go nights, but might want to go with her children in her hometown. So uh, wonderful way of, of getting a sense of what people were thinking, what they were saying as chronicled uh, in, uh, in the Brookline newspapers. Over time, as technology improved and uh, images could be included in, in, in the papers, the images are, 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 are really quite, quite wonderful in a way of learning about the town. So at the, at the, at the top is a, is a map from 1891 of the, uh, the park, the playground uh, near the Lawrence School. The Lawrence School in its original shape is in the lower right. And the park that's that's still an active park today is is shown in in, in the center. Uh, below is uh, Kilsyth uh, Kilsyth Court, an apartment building um, on on Beacon Street in Kilsyth in 1912. Um, the uh, the Altman Building, the building that uh, I, I talked about earlier on the corner of Babcock and Harvard Street is shown in an architect sketch in 1922, the year actually just before it opens. This was a sketch when it was still in the planning stages. And in, below that in 1923 is a photograph uh, from the newspaper of the, se the second floor of that building, which was the billing department of New England Telephone. So it's all women working in the billing department uh, seen up there. So, so going through the newspapers, you get not just text and description and words and opinions, but you get images and you get to see what different parts of the town looked like uh, as, as time went on. Um, advertisements. Uh, uh, those of you who have been on some of my, uh, my walking tours, I do a tour of uh, the Coolidge Corner Commercial District and another of uh, Brookline Village. And um, 
I, I love learning about what, what the stores were like at different times. It, it, it gives me a sense um, of what, where people went, what do people shop in, often in, in places that, uh, and, and storefronts that still exist today and, uh, and, and seeing how local retail changed over time. And the advertisements are wonderful. Um, uh, the, the one in the lower left is one that I had not seen before, 1921, the Coolidge Corner Electric Shop at 295 Harvard Street. Um, that's basically uh, at the corner of uh, Green Street. Um, and uh, I love that image of uh, an electric washer, 1921. So, so you, you get a sense not just of, of places and people, but of, of life, of what, what uh, people were, were doing and, and, and buying and what was available to them by looking at the newspapers. Advertisements are also uh, very useful for, uh, for pictures. So these are all uh, pictures from advertisements in, in the newspaper, all for, for places that still exist. Some of them are photographs and some of them are sketches. Uh, there's one interior shot. Those are, are, are fairly unusual. Walker's Drug Store um, at 293 Harvard Street, which is now Webster Bank. Um, uh, Thomas's Seafood uh, on, on Beacon Street, uh, now Wavelengths Hair Salon. The All-America Shoe Shop, now GameStop. Um, uh, down below on the left is a sketch of the Brookline Savings Bank, which is two storefronts, one of which is now uh, Starbucks, which actually started as the first Coolidge Corner branch of the library. Um, I'd love to find an interior shot of that, but I have not been able to find one yet. Uh, Fuller Lumber, now Brugger's Bagels, uh, on, on Harvard Street, just south of Beacon. And one of my favorites, uh, the Cafe de Paris at 299 Harvard Street. I love that uh, um, that that uh, design, that kind of modern uh, design of the Cafe um, de Paris, which was there for a number of years. It's now the uh, Mariucci Japanese uh, food and deli, but some of you will remember when that address was uh, Jack and Marion's Deli. So, so lots of things that you can, you can find. There are lots of topics that um, are not as, as specific. I, I get asked a lot about how to uh, research a particular place, whether it's somebody's house or a building or people who lived in a house, or, or, but, but there are many topics that can be covered um, that are not always as, as easy uh, to find. And uh, for example, uh, this page has uh, several pieces from different years uh, covering African-Americans in, in, in Brookline. Uh, at the top are articles about three speeches of very, very well-known names who spoke in Brookline. In 1874, I only discovered this one fairly recently, Frederick Douglass spoke at Town Hall about John Brown in 1874. In 1899, uh, there was a talk about uh, Atlanta University, one of the first um, to start black universities and colleges in Atlanta. Uh, the speech was uh, you know, William Lloyd Garrison Jr., who lived in Brookline, the son of the famous abolitionist and newspaper publisher, and uh, W.E.B. Du Bois speaking at, uh, um, in, in, at the first church uh, of Brighton, but covered, I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's uh, the Leyden Congregational Church and, and, and uh, at the Beaconsfield Casino. Um, which was a, a clubhouse on, on Beacon Street near Washington Square. And in 1903, Booker T. Washington gave the commencement speech at Brookline High School. I also found a, a report on a black uh, conference in Cincinnati in 1875. And in 1913, uh, a letter in an editorial in one of the Brookline papers to President Woodrow Wilson uh, from W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, our Oswald Garrison Villard and Morfield Story, who uh, was a white Brookline resident who was the first president of the NAACP, uh, protesting to the president about um, the returning influence of the South in the federal government. It, was, it wasn't all uh, positive. Uh, I also found uh, aspects of race that were uh, um, uh, much, much different from the kind of things that we saw. So the, the one at the top left is an article uh, that starts the, the Negro hope for the South. Sounds very positive, but the first sentences read, the Negroes are doing better considering all the circumstances of their position uh, than the superior race. They are not altogether idle and the majority of them will work when the opportunity for labor is presented. So how, how were black people talked about in, in the Brookline newspapers in 1879 and later? In 1910, Brookline had minstrel shows. Um, Brookline wasn't the only place that had minstrel shows, but it had them. Um, 
this one was in, in town hall. And uh, the 1911 example uh, is, is these little tidbits often taken from other papers like this one from the Chicago Post that are kind of making fun of uh, African-American uh, men usually uh, with um, kind of jargony language, um, often uh, portraying them as not very smart, although sometimes portraying them as smart indeed and very clever, but even those are kind of patronizing. So you can read that sort of thing and get a sense of, of that. On the bottom are two things that I've found in the past and have never been able to find more about um, and uh, haven't, haven't gone to, to look more, but I'm going to do it now that we have the new database. Uh, in 1912, there was an article about a home has been found in Brookline for aged colored people, colored people um, in uh, South Brookline, just South Route 9. I don't think it ever happened, and I really want to know why, what happened. Uh, a demonstration at uh, Longwood Towers about a graduation for the Boston Girls High School, so not, not, a, not a Brookline school, but the graduation was taking place, a dance in, in uh, Longwood Towers, and there was a protest that um, three uh, black girls were not allowed, and eventually they were. So uh, lots of things that, that could be found. But how do you find these things? So, so I, I think um, this, this wide variety of the type of content uh, will convince you, if you're not uh, already uh, convinced, that there's a lot of rich content, a lot, a lot of rich things that one can learn about by going through the Brookline newspaper. So, but how do you find these things? Well, first, I, I, I told you earlier that I would um, uh, talk about um, the old way of doing things. Uh, at, at some point, um, an index was created by volunteers. I'm not sure uh, exactly when this was started. I, I, I see that Anne Reed, uh, is here and Anne could probably tell us later maybe uh, uh, when this was created, but it's a series of index cards that, uh, that indexed um, articles in the newspaper. And when I started searching almost 20 years ago, uh, these were turned into uh, a search tool that's, uh, that was available on the website and is still available on the website and, um, and can be very useful. Um, for example, uh, here are a couple of searches. You remember when I showed the slide about looking up people, one of the people was Mary McSkimmon, the longtime um, uh, principal at, at, at the, the Pierce School. And, and briefly at the end of her career, a member of the school committee and searching for her name, it's a, it's a pretty unusual name. So you're not gonna find a lot of McSkimmons uh, brings up quite a few articles. Most of these are from the 1930s. There's one from 2005, 150, uh, years educating uh, citizens of the world in the Brookline tape. I wrote that um, when I was doing some research on her. Uh, I was really interested to learn that uh, in 1914, she worked with other authors on a kind of a, an international um, curriculum to teach uh, young children uh, about about the countries of the world. So, so the, the database uh, can help that. You can also look up uh, parking. So if I look up parking, you think, see things about garage owners uh, oppose open air parking license, changes made in the parking rules, uh, Downs Field neighbors, that's from 2005. Uh, the parking ban is removed. Uh, Coolidge Corner Business District allows limited parking on Beacon Street. So, uh, so, so a, a lot of different things that can be uh, gathered by, by using this database. And it'll tell you uh, the date and the page and some subject headings that allow you to get it. As valuable as this index is, there are some problems with it. Um, remember uh, the article about uh, Florida Ruff and Ridley uh, hosting the United States Minister to Haiti and various other people at her house. So you can see that her name, when I search for Ridley in the newspaper index, I get four hits, but they're all Jeremiah Gridley. So Ridley is part of the name and Florida Ruff and Ridley does not come up. Ridley does not come up when I when I search in the database uh, for her. Why? Because um, if you remember, this article was one in a long list of briefs under uh, about town, and uh, it's it's they're not each item is not indexed, so really hard to find before the new database came along. There were lots of these things. They went by different names and they were just uh, little tidbits and notes about different people in town. 
called About Town, Social Notes, what Brookline people are doing. And there are lots of rich information uh, in, included in here. One about uh, a leading lady from the Boston Museum Stock Company, which was a theater, uh, spending the past few weeks with a, a family on Harvard Street. Uh, George Perrin Jr. was host at a delightful children's birthday party at his home on Naples Road. The occasion was to celebrate his eighth birthday. Um, that's not the kind of thing you're going to find in the Boston Globe. It's uh, the, the, the little bits of local news under uh, social notes. Incidentally, I, I tried to find more information about George Perrin, and I found uh, information about George Perrin Sr., his father, who was a minister. But uh, another example of the way the index worked is that uh, when I searched for Perrin, I got a whole bunch of articles about the superintendent of schools, because P-E-R-I-N is in the middle of the word superintendent. Um, so even when I put in George and Perrin, I got a few of those because there were articles that way. The, the 1920 article uh, about uh, uh, speakers at the annual meeting of the New England Penmanship Association, um, where uh, somebody at the high school is, is currently president of the association. So uh, I, I love these little things, these little odd bits and odd, odd things that, that, that give you a sense of what, what people were doing, what life was like in, in ways that uh, you, you didn't expect. And uh, I, I'm, I'm going down rabbit holes all the time. I'm not sure I'm going to look into the uh, Penmanship Association, but I found that uh, quite, quite intriguing. Um, if I uh, wanted to use the database to search for uh, African-Americans, Black people in, in Brookline, uh, I tried using the term Negro, uh, an older term, and I found very little. I found a 1965 article uh, about um, housing for, for Negroes. Um, I found something about a crime from 1933, and I found a couple of things about uh, um, Roland Hayes, the singer, and about a concert by the Negro Quintet. But that's about all. So if I wanted to find things about the black presence in, 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 in Brookline, um, this database is not particularly uh, useful for it. Um, I showed earlier the, 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 the columns of uh, real estate and building news, building permits and weeks transfers. And you see things here about particular houses and particular people. Those are not gonna show up in the index as well. But there's, an, there's another problem, and I'm, I'm, I'm soon going to leave the problems and go to what we can do with the new database. So there are other issues with uh, using this before uh, the new data, database became available. And one was the process. Um, I sort of remember that I took a picture of myself working on the microfilm machine, and I was able to find it. So there I am about uh, 10 years ago, working on the microfilm machine. Uh, I took this picture with, with my phone. I think my, my hand is probably extended out behind me to take the picture. And you can see uh, some of the things that I found. And, and initially when I would do this, I would um, uh, print them out, 10 cents a page. And I have drawers full of articles on different topics I was researching. Um, when uh, phones started having cameras and iPad, I would take pictures and I would gather lots of different information. And this is this is what it looked like. Um, uh, when an article covered more than one page, I had to take more than one picture. The quality wasn't great. Um, and uh, but I I, uh, I would take these usually with my phone and I'd come back and uh, and I would load them up onto my computer from my phone and I have the pictures. Um, the quality wasn't great. Um, you can see uh, what these looked like. Um, it varied quite a bit. You can see on, uh, on, on the, the one on the right and the one on the left, this little yellow oval, that's a, a reflection of the, the fluorescent lights on the screen of the microfilm machine. And when I saved these, they had names like IMG underscore 2016-1228, et cetera, et cetera, JPG. So the middle part is the date that I took it not particularly useful, um, but it doesn't tell me anything else about it. So when the, the, the new system tied to a computer came along, a lot more could be done. So I could get better quality and um, I could uh, zoom in, zoom out. I could change the lighting much better than I could on the microfilm machine. And I could save it to a flash drive or to Google Drive. And I've got lots of things. Um, so as opposed to uh, 
the IMG, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, on uh, the ones I took with my phone, uh, I would save things to Google Drive with names like Bridal Path, 816-1936. So an image that I, that, I, that I saved on the computer from the microfilm. I still had to load the microfilm, but it was much better than um, what it was. And, and I could give names to it. So it made it much easier to organize and find things. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the, the, the new way of doing things. And, and, and again, for those of you who, who joined a little bit late, we've had a few uh, glitches this week. The, uh, the, the interface uh, changed on Tuesday and I had to redo a bunch of my slides. And, uh, and then it wasn't working this morning. And, and the last time I looked uh, about a half an hour or 45 minutes ago, uh, it was back to the old interface. Um, so I'm not quite sure what, what we'll get. And we'll, 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 we'll try a little bit in, in a little while. But uh, the, the, the basic search screen has uh, a couple of ways of searching. It has uh, a search box and what, what, what terms you're going to search. It has a, 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 a date. Uh, between certain dates, and it has the different titles of the newspapers. Um, when you click on where it says all in the search, you get a couple of options. And this is fairly uh, typical with many, many databases. So you can search for all, where if you put in articles that have all those words. If you put in exact, it'll search for a term. So you can put in a phrase and it'll look for the exact phrase. If you put in any, uh, it'll find any of those words. So um, all will, if you put in three words, it'll only find articles that have those three words. If you put in any, it'll find any articles that have any one of those three words. None is only useful if you wanna add to uh, say, not find certain things. And uh, uh, so here's a, a search that I did looking for Florida Ruff and Ridley. And I put in Ridley and it showed, uh, one to 10 of 307 results. And what it shows is a little snippet. And the snippet looks a little bit weird. Um, it says senior events and Ridley and the junior events, both members with no space of the dot, dot, dot by A. Ridley, any A, B, rescue, no action. And so, so what it's actually doing here is just pulling little snippets of the article to give you a sense of where your term appears. So it, it, it's that's not the way the article actually appears, but it gives you a sense. But the top one has A. Ridley and the bottom one has U. Archie Ridley. So uh, Florida Ruffin Ridley's husband was Ulysses Archibald uh, Ridley and their son was Ulysses Archibald Ridley Jr. who was known as Archie. Um, so when I search for Ridley, we get a lot of articles about him, actually, because he, he was an athlete, he was a scholar, um, uh, he was mentioned quite a bit in the newspapers. So um, uh, 307 times. Uh, if I put in Florida and Ridley and search for all, I get 13 results. Um, the first one is actually part of a, a real estate record involving their property, and the second one uh, you can see uh, it says Horace S. Ridley and Florida, lands of Florida. So we're, that's, that's not about Florida Ruff and Ridley at all. So how else can we search this? Um, change that drop down to exact and put in results are found. Okay? Now, part of that is because like with, we saw with the obituaries, she was often referred to as Mrs. U.A. Ridley or Mrs. Ulysses Ridley. Um, we can try searching for that, but if I put in Ulysses Ridley, I'm getting a lot of things uh, for um, her son and her husband. So I'll try something else. So I'll go back a little bit. You see, I've got I've circled on the bottom a little plus sign, which allows you to enter a uh, additional box. So so now I've got Ridley. And I'm changing in the second one to exact, and I'm putting in their address, 131 Kent Street. And uh, a couple of things show up. And the one is a, is a real estate record. The other one has Mrs. UA Ridley, 131 Kent, highlighted. And a little bit further, I see Mrs. J. Rs. Anderson. That looks to me like Lars Anderson. And sure enough, in this personal column, there's an item about the Women's National Republican Club of Massachusetts held a successful parlor meeting on Thursday at the home of Mrs. UA Ridley at 130, Junior, 131 Kent Street. 
Mrs. Lars Anderson, who presided, addressed the members, uh, as did uh, a couple of other people, including Mrs. Ruffin, who was Florida Ruffin Ridley's mother, Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin. So you wouldn't be able to find this in the old database because it's 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 one tidbit in a in a, a bunch of small items about um, people in in Brookline. Um, I also found. Uh, a, a mortgagee's notice of a sale of real estate that their house was being foreclosed on in uh, 1914. Uh, I don't think it was uh, it was actually foreclosed on, um, and I need to investigate a little bit further. But again, you find things that you might not uh, expect to find. Another example. Uh, again, I mentioned that people are often interested in researching uh, their own house or other buildings in town. This is a, a, a house that is down the street from me, 432 Washington Street at the corner of Greeno. Uh, its house was built in 1896, and it's a replica of John Hancock's mansion on Beacon Hill. There were a number of replicas of this house that were built uh, around the country, including uh, the um, the Massachusetts exhibit at the, Colum at, at the uh, Columbian Exposition in, um, in Chicago in 1893. But this house still stands, a replica of the, um, uh, the, the John Hancock house. And you can see that, uh, again, using the, the interface, <laughs> the, the new interface, which may or may not be available, there are 28 results when I searched for exact 432 Washington Street. What are some of them? So. Uh, one from 1913 was the thing I was expecting to find. It says, wanted a boy about 18 years old to do chores and wash an automobile, apply at 432 Washington Street, uh, Brookline. So um, just a, a small tidbit, but, but it, it's the kind of colorful detail that, that, that I really love to find, that, that, that uh, taken with many others, paints a portrait of, of, of how people live their lives. Different people of different classes and, and uh, um, uh, found. Um, uh, the, in 1915, there was an event, uh, the uh, first parish branch of the Women's Alliance was having a speech at the residence of Mrs. B.S. was her husband, Benjamin S. Blanchard. Um, uh, owing to the illness of the initial speaker, uh, there was a second speaker uh, from the South End House, which was a settlement house that did a lot of charitable work on uh, reading her paper on, have you put your religion to work, 1915. In 1919, the Junior Alliance for the First Parish uh, had Mrs. Nina Sales Peck, a musical monologist, uh, speaking at the house of Mrs. Benjamin S. Blanchard at 432 Washington, $1 collected at the door. I have to look up what a musical monologist is. I don't know. Um, in 1921, there was an obituary of Benjamin S. Blanchard. I later found one of his wife as well. So you find out more. So just by searching an address, you find out a lot of, of, of detail, uh, big detail and small detail. There was one curious one from 1907 um, for laundry. Uh, 36 cents per dozen sheets, pillow slips, et cetera. And I thought, that, that does not seem like something that would be going on at that house. And if you look a little more closely, it says the address is 432 Washington Street in Brighton. And um, so that's something to watch out for. I live at 490 Washington Street, just down the street. And believe me, there have been mix-ups to this day with Brighton. We've had pizzas delivered. We've had uh, packages delivered. And at least once we had four very festive looking young people show, ring our doorbell looking for a party, which was not here. So um, it was happening <laughs> in, in the past as well. Um, but I wanted to find out what was the earliest uh, thing and what was written about this house after uh, Benjamin Blanchard's death. And, um, and I used the, the, the filters, and I'm gonna talk about the filters in a minute, um, to, uh, to look by decade and then by year. And I found the, uh, the earliest one, I believe from 1901, there were two in that first decade of the, 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 the 20th century, town affairs at the meeting of the selectmen, uh, the following business uh, of general interest was transacted, the following named physicians were appointed as additional vaccinators. So uh, this is in 19, 1901, uh, Dr. Blanchard was one of the doctors being uh, appointed by the town to, to give vaccines, vaccines for probably for 
the, the flu, maybe for some other things. And then in 1925, I found an ad from Leonard's auction house about the entire household furnishing to be sold as the Dr. Blanchard home. And, uh, and there's a uh, consisting of living room, bedroom, dining room, furniture, antiques, oriental rugs, carpets, high boys, low boy, desks, bureaus, et cetera, et cetera, all being sold in there. So uh, again, getting, getting a sense of, of the life of the town through this one house, through small articles, um, advertisements, and, and, and lots of other kinds of things. Um, Another uh, example of something I, I, I decided to search for is um, the building, the opening of, of the, the current building of the library, which was long history of the library on the library's website. And, um, and it gives a date in November. Uh, I, I, I tried to find again, because I, I, I came across uh, some time ago, uh, the old 1869 library. When the new library was being built, they picked up the old library and moved it over where the Civil War statue um, is now, uh, which was dedicated in 1915 and kept it going while they built the new library. And then they moved all the books in and they tore down the old library. I've got to find that again, because that was a great story. So when I searched for the library it wasn't 305 uh, results. So obviously I wasn't gonna browse through the whole thing. I wanted to filter this. I wanted to focus on the dedication of the library. So on the left in the new interface are filters. They're filters by title, by city, by decade, and by year. Um, the, the title one, probably not all that uh, useful or important. Um, uh, generally when I'm searching, if I wanna find something on a particular topic, um, I'm, I'm not terribly interested in which paper, more than one paper was being published in Brookline, but it, it, it's available. And if I've already seen things in the Chronicle, I may want to limit it to uh, another one. The, the filter of city um, really doesn't apply because uh, the company that makes these, these databases uh, uh, has them for a lot of different cities and towns. But when you do it in the Brookline database, Brookline's the only choice. So you won't be using that. The two that are useful for uh, filtering by date are uh, decade and year. You can also, uh, let me go back just a second. You can see where you can put in dates. Um, that seems to work a little bit tricky. And um, uh, and, I, and I actually find using the, uh, the filters a little bit easier. Um, uh, maybe I'll, I'll show if, the, if, if the, the new interface is working, I'll show how that works. But, but in, in, uh, it's a little tricky. You can use that by, by actually putting in dates. But if I want to uh, find stories about the library's dedication in, um, in uh, 1910, uh, I, I limit it by selecting filters. And the way you do that go back here is that you see here where it says uh, filters by uh, decade and it shows the decades and they're all checked. And if I click on uh, clear all, it unchecks them. And then I could just check the decade that I want. So I check 1910 to 1919. And over here, when I do that under year, all the, I just select 1910. And that's where I get, um, articles from, from 1910. And there are 191 of them in 1910 mentioned in the library. And they show up by what's known as relevance rank. So uh, there are algorithms that, you know, how many times is the word library mentioned? Is it mentioned in the, in the title of the article? Various ways. Um, and there's an article on November 19th, uh, 1910. And it actually brings up a little uh, calendar. And you can actually use that calendar to move through the months long. I want to see that article. Um, and uh, uh, I'd like to be able to sort by date and that's not one of the features that's currently available. So I click on, uh, if I click on November 19th, um, it brings up four articles mentioning the library on November 19th. And up here uh, on the left, you can see the decade is, is selected and the year is selected and there's the four articles. Um, there are two each from the Chronicle and from the Brookline Press. So two newspapers going, both covering the, um, the, the article. And here's what the article looks like. Okay, here's what comes up. And this is something, this is a, a very different 
uh, change from, from the way the interface worked before and, and includes um, a number of, of improvements. One of the things that was true in the old interface and in this interface is it highlights the term. Uh, some of them are in blue and some of them are in green, and that's new. And I believe, uh, I'm not quite sure what's happening in this one, but often if, if uh, you search for a word um, and part of the word is showing, it'll be in a different color. But um, I'm gonna go to the next screen and talk about some of the features that are here that, that are numbered. So number one, uh, there's the article and it actually goes right to the article to where it appears on the page and, um, and shows you the highlighted terms. Um, you can move through this issue of the newspaper and there are a couple of ways you can do it. They're marked by the number two. There's uh, up at the top, there are arrows to go backwards or forwards or to tick a particular page, but there are also right and left arrows that can uh, carry you through it. Through it. Uh, number three down at the bottom is allows you to zoom. By default, when it comes up, it basically fills the screen, but you can zoom in, you can zoom out um, and, uh, and, and change the page width. Uh, number four shows you the terms you search for. So, uh, so library is, is, uh, is the term and that's why it's highlighted. But if I wanna search on this page for other things, I could, I could, if I take that off, the highlighting will go off. If I put in another term, it'll highlight whatever term I put in. Uh, number five allows you to download the page. Uh, and, and, and again, much easier than the way I was doing it in the past. I'm working, working from home, working from uh, wherever I'm working, uh, I can download the page. And number six, if you, which above this little thing will bring up various other options. So you can email the page to yourself or to someone else. You can uh, get a link to the page that will uh, be a, a permanent link that can always get you back to this page and you can share that. You can share it to Facebook, you can share it to Twitter, you can share it to LinkedIn. Um, that's that's a kind of a, an interesting option. Of, uh, I'm not quite sure uh, exactly how some of the historic information will work in LinkedIn, but I suppose it could, and there could be some others. You can save it as a Google bookmark. Um, and, um, uh, and, and to Pinterest. So there are lots of different ways of doing it. Um, and on the top is a clipping tool. And the clipping tool is really useful and really good. So we go to the next slide. And um, here's the article and it starts uh, a little ways down in the center column of the first page and it continues down the third column. So when I wanted to clip this, I used the, uh, the zoom in zoom out feature to zoom out so I could clip the entire thing page. I clipped it and uh, you can see it's at 60% of actual size and I'm able to clip it. And then I would click on the little arrow here and it offers me various options. Um, this, is, this is stuff that I'm still trying to figure out exactly what, what they do. It allows me to give it a name. So I put in 1910 Brookline Library Dedication, and there's the clip, uh, page three of the Chronicle, published in Brookline, Massachusetts on Saturday, November 19th, 1910. It has these other drop-down menus that are actually not terribly useful because they're they're kind of like um, generic terms. So a person could say noted person, it could say politician. Um, so it, it's it's not like you're putting in an individual person. Uh, same with place, which will show you a part of the country, um, a, a, a state, a city. So again, we're just two or some kind of generic topics some broad topics. So can be useful. Um, uh, Ira uh, talks about you know, what, what decade it is, um, that's all gonna be there anyway, but you can add comments. So you can do all sorts of things and, and, and save this. Um, I started playing around because I wasn't sure what this meant. Um, artistic filter to your clip. And there's a desk cue image, polarity, and a highlight image. And I'm still not entirely sure what highlight image means because it's already highlighted. The desk cue, image, give it like a sepia tone, um, kind of different ways of saving the image while the polarity changes it from black on black text on the white background, it reverses it. Um, so you can, you can take any of those. And then uh, it gives you the option to uh, tag it, 
to uh, uh, to share it with Facebook or with Twitter or to download it and and take the article. So so lots of options to to search. Searching would often teach students is what I call directed stumbling. And there's a certain amount of that in, in, in any database, including in this database. Um, uh, and there's a certain amount of uh, persistence, a certain amount of stubbornness, and I'm both persistent and stubborn um, uh, in, in working to find the things that I want to find. Um, finally, um, uh, the, the, the ways of searching, uh, this is, um, uh, uh, oh, an example of something that, that requires persistence. I've been doing some research on the colony they buildings. And, uh, uh, they, they were, I, I discovered fairly recently that when the bridge over the railroad tracks was widened, those buildings were raised eight feet in the 1880s. And there are some articles about this. But when I search for colonnade building, I get a lot of advertisements for businesses in the colonnade building. And there's not a particularly good way to uh, eliminate that. There are some databases where uh, articles are designated as what type of article they are, that's not available here. So, um, so that's one of the, the, the tricks. Um, the, uh, remember the, the, the way that I, that I searched before, uh, that can still be useful. Um, because these these are indexed. So again, you're not going to find things. I showed examples earlier of things that you won't find doing this, but you can find lots of things and get the dates and the pages and 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 then get them not by loading the microfilm in the library, but by um, going to the online database. Um, looking for more recent things, uh, the article database is is going to be a mixed a mixed bag. Um, if you look for affordable housing. You find the loss wasn't a topic uh, that came up in, in the 19, uh, up to the 1940s, nor is gay marriage uh, or, or Black Lives Matter. Um, and in fact, Black Lives Matter doesn't come up at all because I believe the index stopped around 2009. So how do you find things after that? Well, we have a couple of local newspapers or news, news sites, uh, the Tab and Wicked Local, uh, Brookline Patch, the Globe and the Herald. Those are online, they're searchable, so maybe the, the local index um, and, and the tab, more recent issues of the tab are available in the library, so you can uh, search for things and the, the, the Wicked Local, uh, you have to subscribe to get access to beyond a certain amount, but you can identify things by searching them and then get them in the library. So lots of ways of, of, of getting things. So, um, Lots of examples here. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm just thrilled with this. I'm, I'm finding new things. I'm doing research uh, all the time. Um, uh, as uh, uh, people who know me know that uh, are, not, are not surprised that uh, I'm, I'm plenty busy. I've got lots of projects I research in Brookline and elsewhere. And the newspaper database is a, a, a fantastic resource. Um, uh, for, for me, for you, for anybody who's interested in uh, researching and learning more about Brookline history. So I'm gonna stop the, the, uh, the, the presentation and um, uh, I, um, I think Jessica, how do you wanna handle a question? Okay. Um... Well, I do see that we have a few in chat. So um, I was going to read the first question out so okay. that those who are not in chat mode uh, don't have to go back and forth. Um, but if anybody does have questions aside from that, um, you know, uh, raise your hand or put it in chat. So first one is, uh, let's see, this is from Kate. It says, this is not a newspaper question per se, but I was playing in the Community History Archive and I saw a reference to the Brookline Press to an apartment house at Walter Avenue and Flora Street in 1904. But I think those streets must have new names today. How would I figure out where the location is? Well, uh, 
as, as many of you will know, the, the area um, along Route 9 near the Boston border went through urban development and um, urban renewal in, in the 50s and 60s. And on, especially on the south side where um, many of the houses were torn down, the streets have gone and, and the Brook House was built. And um, that happened after the newspapers that are, that are, that are in the database. Um, there are certainly other sources. I did a, a, a program with the Boston Public Library and the Brookline Library uh, with their Atlas Scope um, database, which uh, has digitized um, Brookline and, and Boston uh, atlases from uh, the Brookline ones go back to 1874, and the most recent one is 1927, and, and also uh, images, uh, maps of today. So you can actually um, uh, find things and, and see uh, what, what the streets are and what, the, what, what they changed. A few uh, years ago, uh, kind of chronicling the, uh, the, uh, the different streets in Brookline, and what they are, and, and when when they were built, when they when they disappeared, if they did, like uh, many of my projects, it's uh, it's 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 a work in progress. And um, <laughs> so, um, hey. other questions. Thanks, Ken. Let's um, have a few more here. Um, Colin asks if there is a link. How do we navigate to the database? Um, I will, I'll take that one. There is a link um, from the library website. I am compiling all of the resources that we've talked about, and I will send that out in a follow-up email. So, you know, you can just follow that once, uh, once this, once that goes out. So good question. Yeah, it's, it's also linked to from uh, the Brookline Historical Society on the research page, uh, along with the, um, uh, Maeve Dugan's article about uh, the history of Brookline newspapers and Atlas Scope and many many other uh, resources that uh, that are available. So, next, Kelly says, um, "I think you might have said, but is the text of ad advertisement searchable?" It is, and um, and hi, Kelly. Long time no see. <laughs> um, uh, Kelly and I. I used to are, are are searchable, and again, I just I just love the advertisements. I I, I had a slide that uh, I I think had my probably my favorite uh, advertisement, mainly for a design purpose. Um, many of you will remember Red Cab, which was a Brooklyn cab company until fairly recently, until maybe the last ten years. Um, and there are uh, ads from the nineteen thirties for Red Cab that are sort of this art modern designs that are just they just fabulous in them uh, so uh, but but the text of them are uh, of the ads yes they're, they're searchable as well um, and uh, actually as I, as I mentioned earlier when I was looking for um, uh, articles about the, a lot of the things that came up were advertisements for uh, businesses that were in in the colonnade so uh, it, it's great and another one of my projects that's much further along, is a, a database uh, of uh, Coolidge Corner um, uh, where I've uh, been documenting all of the businesses that were in all, uh, I'd say about 75% of the, um, the, the storefronts in Coolidge Corner are buildings that were built between the 1890s and the 1930s. So series of restaurants and I have a, a huge spreadsheet of what was in uh, each one of these locations. And um, uh, it was mostly compiled uh, through uh, town directories, but the town directories um, after, there were a few in the, in the 40s, but mostly in mid 30s, they, after that they stopped uh, showing businesses. Um, so a lot of what I've got comes from finding advertisements and, uh, and, 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 and compiling that. Um, and light of some of the, the pictures I took from the microfilm reader, I have a lot of those that are advertisements. I, I just I just love the advertisements. It just uh, gives uh, such such a, a a sense and a flavor of you know daily life in town. So yes, they are searchable. Okay, um, there was a bit of chatter that I didn't quite follow between um, Larry and 
uh, would, I think perhaps uh, he was answering part of Kate's question. Um, Larry, if you want to unmute and clarify, I, sorry, I might be a little tired. <laughs> Larry is our uh, webmaster at the Star Wars yeah. Society and board member. So, um, yeah, I was just going to say you could search on Walter on the Brookline Historical Society org site. Do a Google, there's a little search bar there, and as I put in the chat, we have a photo section, and under there there are different areas, and one of which is the farm, which used to be the old Brook House location, and there are several Walter Avenue photos, Flora Flora street is it uh photos there yeah and and you know we're, we're focused on the newspaper database but there are there are lots of other uh sources i am uh tentatively doing a a, a five-week workshop at brooklyn adult and community education starting on february 28th um on uh different ways of doing research uh into Brookline person signed up, it costs money. So, um, uh, um, you know, I'm not sure it's going to happen. Um, so it's a lot of work to put together. I don't know that I want to do that for one person. So uh, um, check it out on the Brooklyn Adult and Community Ed, uh, site. And uh, if, if you're interested, uh, I will spend some time uh, looking at other sources of, uh, of Brookline history, uh, other newspapers, including Boston papers and others um, and maps and, uh, um, building records and um, all, all sorts of things that uh, that 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 uh, work very well with what's available in, in, in this fabulous Brooklyn newspaper database. Okay, do we have any other questions that people have had at this point? We've got about another fifteen minutes left before we need to close down for the evening. I could try and go. I could try and go live. So, <laughs> you, let's, hey, let's give it a shot. What's the worst that happens? Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. He said, "And got the spinning wheel." So <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's see. What do I want to go to? Go to. Waiting for it to share. Hmm. It's not sharing. Oh, here we go. And I will go with bookmarks to Brooklyn newspapers and let's see what interface we get. We get the old one. Okay, so this is this is the old one. So this is going to look a little bit different from what we did. Anybody want to suggest a topic? What if we find articles about Clark Gable? Clark Gable. Okay, so I'm going to change, like in the current interface, I'll change all the words in Clark Gable. And I'm going to click on discover. And we got, I'm going to move the uh, chat out of the way. So I can see 189 results in, uh, in order. And my guess is that a lot of these are going to be advertisements. So we click on this very first one. And unlike um, the, the new interface, it doesn't automatically go to where the search term appears. Um, uh, in this case, it's right at the top. So attractions at the local theater, at the Brookline Theater. The Brookline Theater was down uh, at uh, Brookline Place. Um, uh, so it wasn't the first theater, but, uh, but an advertisement uh, uh, showing the, the Brookline Theater. I see somebody asking about Quarry Hill one of my favorite places. So I'm gonna click back here on home. And again, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this interface because I assume the, the new one is, is going to replace it. So I'm going to do uh, an exact phrase, Corey Hill and discover.
and 2090. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, I'm going to hit the plus sign here, and I'm going to add uh, another word. And um, there was a toboggan run, and because I can never remember how to spell toboggan, I'm going to say any of the words, and I'll put toboggan or toboggan. Hopefully, one of those is right. I think the first one is right. Um, so that's using the, any of the words. And I refine the search, and I've got 65. And here's one from 1887. Okay, I'm going to click on this. And somewhere on this page, here we go. Messrs. George W. Beals and George W. Cobb of the Brookline Coasting and Toboggan Club and Messrs. Harry Cushman and Walter Chase of the Quarry Hill Toboggan Club were present at a meeting of the Committee of Arrangements to receive Le Trapour Toboggan Club of Montreal held at Young's Hotel on Monday. That's wonderful. Um, and uh, there's a second one down below that says the Quarry Hill Toboggan uh, Coast uh, was visited last Saturday evening by Governor Ames and members of the Half Past Twelve Club, who drove out from Boston in a boat sleigh drawn by six black horse horses. After inspecting the club rooms, His Excellency was induced to try the slide and accompanied by Miss Florence Peck and Mr. Peck, and he made several trips amid the applause of the spectators. That's wonderful. I love it. Um, 1887. There are some uh, photos, Larry. I think we have a photo of the toboggan slide uh, that we recently got that's on our, our site. Of course, there are lots of photos um, on the, the um, uh, Digital Commonwealth, and Larry has on our site brought together a lot of those. So you can look up Quarry Hill um, on our site and you will get photos from our collection, from the library's collection and many other things. But that, that's, that's, that's a wonderful example of the, the kind of thing that I, I, just, I just love to find. Anyone else? I'll, I'm gonna show you one more thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up and, um, and I've got the toboggan and now I'm gonna, Put in the date. So I've got the decades and the years. Here's where I can put in a, a particular date. And you could do it here by uh, there are number number of ways. You can you can type it. This also works in the new interface, but a little bit oddly. So uh, I'm gonna say, let's say we do 1920 to 1941. Let's see if there was still toboggans on Corey Hill later. And then I click on apply and refine, and there's only one. And let's see what it is. Okay, back in the 80s, Corey Hill was a pioneer in toboggan, okay? So it wasn't, wasn't still there. We could, we could keep searching um, and, and find others. But, but, but using the different filters uh, can get things. So, so Brookline has long been a sports center. So this is from 1926, but it's, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's writing then about the history of tobogganing in, in Brookline. And I do have a small question from Mary Dunn. And she asked if there was a newspaper named the Brookline Chronicle Citizen, and will that be included? The, yes, um, there is, and yes, we will. Um, we are only limited by the number of reels that the library has microfilmed, and we definitely have some with that particular name. And we'll be going, um, we started at the very earliest microfilm that we had, and we're moving closer to the to the present and we will be able to go through um, up through I think 2005 is where um, the uh, the copyright uh, gets weird but uh, but that's it's it's very exciting to be able to do so much it just takes time and money 
And and the uh, the the article that Mabe Dogan did about the newspaper indicates that that the, um, the 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 Chronicle at one point changed its name to the Citizen, and then it was the Chronicle Citizen. So it's they 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 really it's really the same paper that went through various uh, name changes. Um, but uh, uh, again, if you go to the Brooklyn Historical Society website, click on research, you'll see that that uh, article that, that Mabe did that, that really is uh, uh, a, a rich history of the newspapers and, and which, uh, you know, brings up a, a, something else to think about when, when you are researching, when you're looking at things is that um, there's a lot of information here, but, um, you know, we're, we're pretty sophisticated in our understanding of media and how media is changing. Um, the newspapers uh, reflect their owners and their publishers and they changed and, and, and uh, even some of the same papers the, the publishers would change, the editorial policies would change, their opinions would change, um, the way they wrote about things could change. So they, there's a lot of information here, but uh, as with anything that, 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 that you read, you know, be aware of uh, who's saying this, who's the audience. I, I found it interesting in, uh, in, in Maeve's paper that the, uh, the the Chronicle at one point, I think, uh, in, the, in the, I think it was in the 1920s, had a, a sub subscription, uh, 3,000 subscriptions. And I forget what the population of Brookline was. It was probably about 25, 30,000 at that point, maybe a little bit more. So that's, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a 3,000 subscriptions is more than 3,000 people because it's households. Um, but who 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 was reading it? Who was the audience? And um, you know, Brookline was uh, uh, was it is a wealthy town, but not everybody was wealthy. Um, I uh, find it interesting in, for instance, seeing those letters to the editor about uh, allowing movies in town. That uh, you get a variety of people. That there not not everybody there is uh, the 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 elite. Um, so the, the papers, at least as reflected in the letters, uh, included a, a different people. And there were uh, organizations, like a lot of um, uh, Catholic organizations that uh, that that are their doings are, are mentioned. And, and uh, many of those were immigrant populations or children of immigrants who lived in places like uh, the farm and um, and the marsh that uh, down down along Route 9. So uh, it's, it's always uh, important to, to kind of be aware of uh, who's writing, who's reading the things that you're getting information from. And I, I was a newspaper reporter. My first job after college, I was a, a newspaper reporter in Tarrytown, New York, along the Hudson River, uh, a, a historic town. I wrote several things about history back then. Um, uh, uh, and and uh, in, in some ways, uh, some similarities to Brookline in that it had a lot of big estates along the Hudson River, but it also had a uh, a mixed population and the, the, the town just to the north of Tarrytown was then known as North Tarrytown had a General Motors plant. It was a working class community. Later changed its name to Sleepy Hollow um, because North Tarrytown was associated with the, the auto plant. And when the plant closed, um, they, they wanted to you know change their name and Sleepy Hollow was Washington Irving, who lived in the, the area as well. So, um, you know, it, it, it's something to be aware of as you use uh, these newspapers or any newspapers is, is that um, not not everything you read is is, is gospel. There are there are uh, there are points of view. There are things that are said and that are not said and ways that they are said. And um, and, and we can learn a lot from uh, from the way the news was covered in the way the community was covered, uh, as well as from uh, some of the some of the facts that are that are that are here. I, I, I'm noticing, by the way, um, that this is up on the screen. Uh, you can see here. I don't know. I'm going to scroll a little bit see if this is part of the same article. It is. It's the same article about the Sports Center. It mentions George Wright, president of Wright and Ditson, uh, America's best known sportsman who knows about sports and the equipment necessary. Uh, I wrote a long piece about George Wright who never lived in Brookline, but it's buried in um, Holyhood uh, Cemetery, the Catholic cemetery that opened in the 1850s. He's a very interesting man who uh, along with his brother, Harry Wright, were part of the, what's often called the first professional baseball team, the Cincinnati Red Stockings of 1869. And they both later played in Boston and he went into the uh, sporting goods uh, business and he, he helped introduce uh, hockey, uh, and popularized tennis in the United States and a very interesting man. So I wrote a long piece about him on my blog that uh, uh, interesting to see him showing up here as well. He uh, uh, 
um, uh, Francis we met, a famous Brookline golfer, uh, worked at his store and uh, um, uh, he uh, helped, uh, um, helped, helped him in, in uh, becoming uh, uh, a famous golfer. So uh, yeah, again, like, like I say, you, you, you notice things, bicycling is here. There's a lot about bicycling. Corey Hill um, was uh, a place, people came in the 1880s to Brookline to ride up Corey Hill on the high wheelers. Can you imagine riding up those, those high wheelers up Corey Hill? But there were stories, and I, I wrote a piece about that as well, again, using the newspapers and other sources about the first person to successfully ride up Quarry Hill. And um, I think that the guy who did it first also rode down Mount Washington on a bicycle. <laughs> I think that's even more daunting than riding up Quarry Hill. Okay, we have about five minutes left before we need to say good night. Um, I did want to thank Ken for this amazing uh, delving into one of the, the most uh, just, I'm just really excited about the newspapers and I'm really glad that I've been able to help make them more accessible and um, that uh, that I have a professional such as you to help guide our, our patrons through the best ways to use it. And I hope we'll get to do another one soon. Great. And I'll, I'll just add one, one last thing is that um, I, I hope people will do their own exploring and I'd, I'd be interested to hear what you find. Um, uh, you know, uh, one one of the the joys of of, of my job as a, as a librarian at, at Boston University and other places is um, when I help students with research, I learn things. But yeah, same. <laughs> I learn things, up and I learn things. I, 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 I didn't have to write the papers, but um, <laughs> so so that was good. But Best um, <laughs> but you can you can write to me at kliss at Brookline Historical Society org. I'd be I'd love to hear the kinds of things that, that, that people find and, and questions that people have. So um, this has been a lot of fun. Um, uh, e even the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the constantly changing interfaces has been fun. There, there, was, there was another it has of, um, uh, of, of properties that I use a lot uh, that had a terrible interface that's, that changed over the weekend. And then I've been joking that uh, everybody's changing their faces. I may, I may have to shave my beard, and change my face too. So anyway, thank you all. It's great to, great to see uh, those of you who stuck, stuck out to the end and uh, be very interested to, to see what people do with, uh, with this great source of information from the library. Thanks again, Ken. Thanks for everybody for showing up and stay tuned and keep your eyes peeled on the library website. We will be adding to our database as uh, we get along. We do about maybe 10, 20 years at a stretch. And so we should be uh, heading into the 40s, 50s and 60s, the 20th century um, here real soon. So uh, take care and uh, look for the follow-up email. Thanks everyone. <laughs>